So take the opportunity yeah, here to practice. Yeah. Practice as much as you can and a little bit more. Yeah. You won't find you won't find so many places where where you're free to practice. Yeah? <clears throat> and the important thing, yeah, I mean I I stress it, yeah. In the evening, please do your daily reflection. Mechivindi. <laughs> we want to know what we are doing, why we are doing, and what the results of our doing is, yeah? This holds true also for the monks, yeah? It is of utmost importance to see what is going on in our heart, yeah? I mean, I cannot stress this, stress it more, yeah? Before we do something or before we say something, yeah? We turn on our brain, yeah? At least that's a German saying. Yeah? Before you open your mouth, turn on your brain. Vor dem Aufmachen des Mundes das Gehirn einschalten. Because we don't do that. We just react, yeah? We react to a situation with words or we react to a situation with, with deeds. Yeah? And we should not, yeah? I mean, we have so much time. Yeah? There is no stress. <clears throat> you have so much time so that we can do it. Before we do something, before we say something, we are aware yeah, of what we want to do or what we want to say and what is the reason for us to do it and what is the reason for us to say it. And then we look at the results of our words, of our deeds. This is this is the I mean what is it in English? Huh? I only know it in German. This is the A and O of our practice. How do you say it's the start and the end of our practice? Huh? <clears throat> it is very important because we don't know what is going on in our heart. Yeah? And in the evening, you know, when you have time, you know, after after you calm your mind and do a daily reflection. No, yeah. I mean, with what kind of thoughts did you get up? Yeah. What kind of mem memories were? Yeah. What did you do then? I mean, go go through the day. Yeah. What did you do then? Yeah. I mean, I got up. You know, I washed my face. What what, what was I thinking when I washed my face? Huh? <clears throat> And then what did I do then? I went to the sala. While I was walking to the sala, what did I do? What did I think? What kind of memories were up? Yeah? When I sat down, you know, when I was distributing the food for the mechis or yeah, helping with the food distribution for, for the lay people, yeah? what did I think? What was going on in my mind? Yeah? I mean, to recall it, to recollect it, yeah? to see, you know, how our thoughts, how our memories, you know, change our moods yeah? or change our behavior. Because sometimes, you know, it colors, it colors our vision, yeah? I mean, if you have a bad thought, you know, if we see something that we didn't like, but we don't notice it, you know, it colors, yeah? It colors our mood, you know, and then we react to a normal situation in a very unhealthy way, yeah? We want to see that, yeah? And we don't want to judge it if it is good or bad, we just want to see what we are doing, why we are doing, and what the results of our doing is. And the same thing for our words. What we are saying, what... Why we are saying it, you know, and what is the result of our speech? Is it so difficult? I mean, we have nothing else to do. Yeah? This little this little work in the morning, yeah? <clears throat> preparing the food, yeah, and then after that washing our balls, yeah? and then in the afternoon sweeping, yeah? I mean, but, but, is that too much? Huh? Can we not try, you know, to be yeah? Yeah? as mindful, yeah, as aware as possible, yeah. being aware of what is going on in our heart, what we are doing, what, yeah. why, why did I go there? Yeah. Yeah. Why did I drink, why did I take a drink now? And so on, and so on. Why, did, why, do, I, why do I stretch my arm? Yeah. <clears throat> and so on. Yeah. We want to know, we want to understand this is, yeah. this is bringing us closer, now close to what is going on in our heart. Yeah? <clears throat> before we actually can dive into our heart. Yeah? Of course, if we ask constantly with our heart, then we don't need to do it. But we are not. Huh? 
We are always in thoughts, yeah, our memories, yeah. Most of the time we are in the future, you know. Huh? <clears throat> I mean, look at, you know, when, when you start to eat, eh? you're already in the future. Eh? I mean, you already take a bite and then already think about what is the next bite, yeah? What, what else do I want to grab? Huh? You, don't, you don't even realize what you're tasting. Huh? <laughs> Because you're already selected, yeah? And if you, if you really have sati, yeah? When you sit down at the meal, yeah, and when, when you finished after the Anamodana, when we start to eat, I mean, your plan for what you eat is already fixed up in the mind. This is not being uh, aware of what is going on. Uh? Aware of what is going on is in the present moment. I take this food, you know, <clears throat> how does it taste, yeah? What kind of taste is it? Yeah? Is it salty? Is it greasy? Is it, uh, is it bitter? Is it sweet? Yeah, and so on. Yeah? No, we just take it, you know, we look at it, you know, we take it, you know, we eat it, you know, and it is nice, yeah? And that's what we say, we judge it, yeah? It is nice or it is not so nice, yeah? It tastes good, you know, it's, it's delicious or it's not delicious, yeah? That has nothing to do with awareness. This is judgment, yeah? And we don't want to judge, yeah? We want to be aware, yeah? We want to be aware of the taste, yeah? And we want to be aware of the movement, you know, when the hand goes, you know, into the bowl and grabs a piece of food. So difficult. Yes, very difficult. <coughs> Sati, this, is, this awareness is, is the key of our practice, yeah? If you do not develop it, if you do not try and or strive to develop it all the time, yeah, we will not we will not progress yeah, very far. Yeah? We have to know, we have to understand. Yeah? And that is in and it is especially important yeah? in, in your reflection, also in your daily reflection, it's especially important any kind of contact with another person. Yeah? To see it. Uh, to go through uh, what actually happened, yeah? And if we have the, the, the history that came before, uh, I, see this, I see this person, you know, and already my you know, blood start to boil. He hasn't even done anything. That's not good, yeah? <clears throat> And there's, a, there's another thing that, that we always should remind ourselves of. And that is, the world that we live in is a mirror of ourselves. If you look in the mirror, who do you see? Somebody else? Huh? Yeah, sometimes. <laughs> huh? I mean, these, the other people, yeah? Or the other situation reflect our own, yeah, our own inner being. Yeah? I mean, what I see in the others is within myself. Yeah? And that, that is important for us to realize. It is not the other, it is not, not the other person. It is not the occasion. It is not the situation. It's us how we react towards the situation. Yeah? It's always us. And that's why we have to be so extremely careful. That's why we have to be extremely aware of what is going on in our mind. And that's why we need this daily reflection, yeah? to get a little grab hold of it, yeah? to be able to grab hold of it. Yeah? Please, yeah? if I do something, yeah? I mean I'm responsible for what I do. If I say something, I'm responsible for what I say. If something uh, something happens to me, it is because of my karma. It's not because of another person. It's not because of another situation. And we try to live in harmony. Yeah, and we try not to explode on each other. <clears throat> it's not good. It's not healthy. Yeah, it's not healthy for it. Yeah, and we don't. And we we try not to be judgmental about anybody. Every thought, every view, 
that we have, every memory that we ha have, is coloring our perception. We don't see the other person as he is because we have thoughts about him yeah? or we have views about him hmm? or we have memories about him so we can't see him. Only what we see is our own memories, our own thoughts. Yeah? Please remind yourself. The only person you know, who who really sees a person as he is, yeah, is a person who is free of thoughts and memories. Yeah? A person who has sati. That's, it's another way. Yeah? You don't have to be an arahant to see a person as it is. Yeah? I mean, but if you have sati, you see that person. Yeah? As he is. Yeah? But it is pretty much impossible for us to do that. Yeah? And that's why we have to train you. And that's why we have to use this daily reflection. Yeah? I mean, go through every step of the day as much as you can remember. You met this person, you know, what was your reaction, what was your speech, what was your doing, yeah? Then you met this situation, then you met that situation, what was your reaction, what was your... Yeah? I mean, go through it, yeah? And even if it takes two hours, you know, I mean, it is worthwhile. Hmm? The Kilesas want to work in the dark. They don't want to know, they just want to do and say and think, yeah? They don't want to know what is the result of their thinking or doing or speech. Yeah? They just want to do. Yeah? They are not interested yeah, in the result. Yeah? But we should be interested. Yeah? We should be really interested in what is happening. Yeah? Why am I doing the things? Yeah? I'm sorry, damn it, what am I doing? Yeah? Why am I doing it? Yeah? To be aware all the time. Yeah? And there is nothing... In, and we. we we have so much time, yeah, all day long, yeah. We have so much time and so little things to do, yeah. So we can do it. Actually, you know, this is this is the best opportunity for us to do it. And re remind yourself, yeah. I mean, what I see, yeah, is yeah, a reflection of my inner self. And what I don't like in the others is within me. Yeah? Also, what I like in the other is in, within me. But we don't see it because we always look outside. We never look inside. Yeah? What I see in the other person is within me. Yeah? Even if it is not to the same degree. Yeah? It can be weaker, yeah? but it's still there. Yeah? And that's why we don't see why we don't see the other person as he is. Yeah? Is, that, is that somehow understood? Yeah? Huh? Yeah? Please, yeah. This is helpful, yeah, I mean to understand, you know, what is going on in the heart. This is really helpful, yeah. <clears throat> and that, yeah, if we follow this principle, I mean we live in total harmony, yeah. All these uh, <clears throat> I mean fighting. I mean, where, where is the where, where is the happiness in fighting? Huh? When we fight each other with words, you know, huh? where is the happiness? Huh? When we don't like something, where is the happiness? Then, if you don't like a situation, huh? you just take the don't like out, and there is happiness. Just simple lessons. <clears throat> but to understand ourselves, we have to do this. Yeah, I mean, do this daily reflection. I, I recommend it. Yeah, and when I ask the people, do you do it? No. Either I forgot it, or I'm too lazy. You know, or yesterday I was too tired to do it. Yeah. I mean, we always have these excuses, and there where you, see, and that's where you see, you know, the power of the kilesas. They don't want to see what they are doing, why they are doing, and what the results of their doing is, because they want to play, yeah, just like children. They, they want to play, yeah. They play, you know, until we are 80, 90 years old, yeah. They don't stop playing, you know. In the next life, they start playing again, yeah. <clears throat> and we have to, 
we have to find, you know, some, some sort of stop, yeah? Stopping the machine, yeah? <laughs> to understand what is going on in our heart. Okay? You have a question? Uh, how, how much time should I use for one frame in situation? For, for what? Da daily reflection, how much time should I use for one frame? Go through, go through the day, however long it takes. Yeah? I mean, in the beginning it might take two hours, yeah? I mean, this is my personal experience. I mean, it took me one and a half hours, you know, to go through, yeah? <clears throat> go through the day. But if you do that every day, I mean, in the end, you know, after a year or two years, you know, it takes you five minutes. And you see everything, you know, I mean, you see clear, like a film, like a movie going on, yeah? You see everything, everything, every thought, every memory, you can see it. We learn, we learn, it, it is also important for us to, to train this kind of memory, yeah? Maybe my, my sight is not strong enough. Maybe my sight is not strong enough because it looks like blank. Well, if it looks like blank, you know, then go to the next situation that you remember. Yeah? If I do it three times a day, then it's more. That is, I mean, it is okay, yeah. I mean, you can do it middays, you know, after, after sweeping, you know, or after you're taking a shower and before you go to bed, yeah? But before you go to bed, there's, there's hardly anything happening, yeah? Most of the things that happens is during the day until, until after Pana, yeah? Because they, where you meet, where you're in contact with people and in contact with situation. When you're at your kuti, there's hardly anything. Huh? No, three, four things. Three, four things, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you can look at every meditation session and see, you know, I mean, huh? why did I get up? Yeah? Why did I stop? Yeah? Just ask this question. Yeah? <clears throat> when, I, when I started, yeah, I was very determined to, to walk for three hours, you know, and why did I stop after half an hour? See what, what made you stop, yeah? <clears throat> this, this you can do for meditation sessions, you know, for walking meditation or, or sitting meditation. You don't have to go through the med this meditation session itself, yeah? That's not important. In the beginning, at the end, yeah? That's it, yeah? So if you walk for three hours, you know, I mean, there's the beginning and there's the end, yeah? If you sit for three hours, there's the beginning, there's the end, yeah? <clears throat> And over time you see more and more clearly what is going on, yeah? I mean, as I said, the important thing is, you know, when we are in contact with situations, yeah, when we are at Panna, when we are sweeping, when we are, when we are in the morning, you know, when we are on Pindapad and so on, yeah? Where we have contact with other people, yeah? Because that's where, where a lot of emotions come up. Yeah? <clears throat> and that's where we have to look very carefully, yeah? what is going on, yeah? How to deal with the judgment during the reflection? The no, just say, judgment. yeah, just call it judgment. And then, then go back, you know, I mean, replace it with Buddha. Oh. Yeah. No, I'm doing the reflection. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, when you see, when you see a judgment coming up, say judgment, yeah, oh. and then the next word is Buddha. Yeah. Don't even pay attention, don't, yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, yes, we are all judgmental. We all judge people by, you know, by their appearance, by their behavior, and so on. And that is, it, it is quite normal. But we can we can live without judgment. Yeah? It is it's it's possible yeah? just to see people as they are yeah? and to see their value. Yeah, yeah and I judge uh, people that oh, I did it here, yeah, not good. No, yeah, that's everything. Yes. Even the judgment, this was good or this was bad, we leave out. Yeah, it's a judgment that comes from the mind that has certain views, what is good and what is bad. But the heart has completely different opinions. Yeah, it doesn't have opinions, but it sees it differently. Because the heart only sees if something is wholesome, if something is unwholesome. Yeah, but if you use a judgment, this was good, you know, the heart doesn't have any opportunity to tell us what it is. Yeah. So that's why you have to leave out the judgment in your daily reflection, yeah, completely. Yeah? Just look at it, yeah. I mean, the heart knows if it was wholesome or unwholesome. You don't have to judge it, yeah, because your judgment, you know, 
colors everything. Just like I said, every thought, every memory colors, you know, colors the way huh? <clears throat> that you see the world. I mean, remember, you know, I mean, sometimes, you know, when we, when we fell in love, you know, I mean, all our, yeah, I mean, we had like rose red glasses on, you know, I mean, the whole was beautiful, yeah. People could say to us anything, you know, and we would just smile, yeah. Huh? But when there was a dark day, you know, we had dark glasses on and then we were so sensitive to anything what people were saying. Yeah? And that is our views, that is our thoughts and opinions, yeah. So these color, yeah? and if you have a, if you have a colored glass, yeah, then be it green glass or, or yeah, <clears throat> Or red glass, you know, or, or black glass, you know, I mean, it colors us, we don't see the things as they really are. Yeah. That's why we should be extremely careful. Yeah? And we can't see people, you know, if you think about them, if, it's, if we are judgmental. Yeah? And the same thing, and that's where we learn in, re in the daily reflection, not to judge, yeah. Just let the heart, yeah. Why, why, why do I say, you know, why, why do I say, you know, I mean, it's ripping off the heart. Do you see it? Do you understand it? And the heart says, no. Huh? And then we look again, do you see it? Do you understand it? And the heart says, no. Because we still have thoughts and, and memories about it, yeah. Until the heart, you know, until the heart says, yes, I understood it. And once the heart understood it, it lets go of it, yeah. But as long as the heart does not see it clearly, yeah, and it cannot see it clearly when we have thoughts and memories coming up, then it cannot see it clearly. That's why we have to, you know, why we have to remove these thoughts and memories, yeah, be it, you know, staying with our Buddha or staying with our breath, yeah? and see things as they are. Okay? Understood? Yeah? Really important for us, you know, living in a community to do this, yeah? And the more people live in, I mean, in the beginning when we came here, we were for four months, yeah? That's all, yeah? No, it's not, yeah? Now, now there are so many people, yeah? So, I mean, the more people there are, the more conflicts there are, and the more problems there are. Yeah? <clears throat> it was much quieter, yeah? <clears throat> anyway, so now, now I think, you know, I mean, it's time to ask the questions or what? Uh, from from the last Zoom session, so we can ask the questions. If you if you have any, yeah, let's wait. If you have any questions, yeah. Yeah. Can okay. yes. Um, I'm still I'm still not sure um, when I need to leave my object meditation object and go to the awareness. I am sometimes confused. I'm feeling like I'm getting concentrated, and it's a little more difficult to stay focused on this object, it become like far, further away, like, and I'm not sure where, where, where I should be. You don't do it. You always stay on your object. Until, until. <laughs> <laughs> until the, and, yeah, I mean, if it is the breath, until the breath stops, yeah? If it is the Buddha, until you can't even think one Buddha anymore, yeah? So it is false, it, right? Yes. Yeah, I mean, it is just tiredness. We are tired of the Buddha, of the repetition of Buddha, or we are tired of observing the breath. That's why we want to jump to the awareness. No, it's only, you know, really when the breath stops, you know, and it, it won't happen so easily, yeah, that the breath stops, you know, or that, that you can't think the Buddha, yeah. The Buddha becomes clear and clear, yeah. What, what happens before is we get tired of it. And this is something that you have to realize with your awareness, that, that you're bored with the object or that you're tired of the object or that you're tired, you know, the body feels tired or this is tired, you know, and so on, yeah. <clears throat> or that you're frustrated, you know, sometimes slow, small frustration, ah, this doesn't go anywhere, you know. Uh, this always keeps us, you know, from our object, yeah. No, we, we, we stick with the object as long as we can, yeah. And if you have a thought, you know, I should jump, yeah, that's not, yeah, then you know, I mean, you should stick to the object. <laughs> it becomes very clear. Yeah. Okay, other questions? Newcomers, huh? David? Yeah. How is your practice, yeah? Use the time wisely, yeah? Huh? You don't get so often the opportunity, yeah? <clears throat> I mean, then later on you will go back into the world and you don't have the time to practice full-heartedly. Yeah? 
And what you learn here, you know, I mean, it is very valuable. You know, also, you know, when you go back home, yeah? What city were you from? Kuala Lumpur. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it's a big city and lots of things happening there. It's different when you live in a small village. Yeah? <clears throat> so use the time wisely, yeah? Also, Nicholas and, and, and uh, Alex, yeah? Right? And Lee, yeah? Put, put some effort, yeah? Right? I mean, here we have the opportunity. And with Jesus well, yeah? And also, you know, I mean, help, them, help me to do them, yeah? You can help, you know, you can take, you can take, you know, a sitting cloth, you know, and put it up for her. You can take a bowl, you know, yeah? or you can wait, you know, until she's finished and take a bowl down and wash it, you know, and then give it to her, yeah, or put it to her kuti. Huh? <clears throat> it's very, it's very helpful, you know, to be of service, yeah, to another person, yeah? especially when we are from the West, yeah, we don't like to yeah? <coughs> serve other people. Okay, if there are no more questions, yeah? And then, then go ahead and, and read. <clears throat> Here are the, the thoughts and memories arise. After a while, it will go away when I focus on Buddha, or it does not work with music or songs that come to my mind. Music and songs keep playing in my mind. How do I get rid of the music and songs? How can I overcome this? Thank you. Ask yourself the question, what is sound? Hmm? <clears throat> sound, sound, is, sound is difficult, yeah? I mean, we can do, what, what we can do is to investigate sound, yeah? And just, just hear the sound, don't hear the music, just hear the sound. Yeah? <clears throat> and what happens, you know, when we hear, when we listen to sound, it's the same thing as we eat, you know. I mean, we instantly go up in our memories, we go up in thoughts, eh? and that's why it's so difficult. Eh? Try, the only way is, you know, to try to replace it with Buddha. Eh? If your concentration is not good enough, I mean, you will be always distracted. Notice that you get distracted, and then go back to the Buddha. Yeah? <clears throat> and... If the sound, if the sound is too much, you know, I mean, then then look for a quieter room or go into the forest, yeah. But there you also have sound. You have the sound of birds, yeah. And sometimes, you know, people, you know, who walk by, you know, have sound. You have sound of voices, yeah. It can it can be disturbing. It is more difficult, yeah. But we can manage with it, yeah. We can live with it, not paying any interest, yeah. Our interest goes out to the sound. The moment we notice, the interest goes out to the sound, and we pull the interest back and put it back on the Buddha. That, that's, the only, that's the only remedy I have here. Yeah. Or investigate the sound, you know, I mean, for the sound, the sound. Yeah. Hearing something without hearing, yeah? without making judgment, without, you know, putting a label on it. Yeah? This is music, this is voice, this is female, this is male, yeah, and so on. Yeah. I mean, we put that instantly, just like with the food, yeah? It is very instantly. So, I mean, if we, remo if we remove all these labels, then we can hear the sound as sound, yeah? And then it is not bothersome. <coughs> okay, next question. Prior to using Anapana, I used to observe only the mind. And when thoughts arise, I can immediately stop the Musakti, and then know even before it arises. Then I noticed that the mind will converge into a single point in the chest area where all thoughts will arise there until they all eventually stop. When they stop, I lost all sense of the breath and body. Also, there is only this space like emptiness that knows yet is all pervasive. Sometimes it gets very bright too. I didn't know if it was right, but I didn't have a teacher, and most teachers teach Anapana anyway. So I switched to Anapana because I thought it'd be easier to get instructions. But I noticed that Anapana gets into the same knowing that. Please 
So stick, stick with anapanasati, know that the breath goes in, know that the breath goes on, until the breath stops, yeah? <clears throat> I mean, if, if his sati is good, yeah, I mean, of course you know, yeah? I mean, the, the, more, the, the more developed your sati is, you know that there is a, yeah? You know that there is an intention to think, yeah? The thought has not even been created. You know that there is intention to think, yeah? And then you can contact very easily, I don't want to think, yeah? <clears throat> Sometimes you see, you know, that you don't see the intention of thought, yeah? and you see the first, the first beginning of the thought, yeah? and then you can stop it there. Yeah? But we have to go the reverse way. Yeah? We see a train of thoughts, 20 thoughts, yeah? then we have to cut it down to 10 thoughts, then to, th to three thoughts, then to two thoughts, then to uh, one thought, yeah? until we can catch it, you know, and then we catch half a thought, then we catch a quarter of a thought, then we catch the beginning of the thought, and then we can catch the intention to think. Yeah? But what you should do, you know, with Anapanasati, I mean, stay with the breath until the breath stops, and only then jump to this knowingness. And before the breath stops, you know, the sensation of the body goes away. If there is this white light, it just is a, it, it's, not, it, it, it's not yet right, yeah? I mean, it's just a sign of concentration. If the, if the white light that appears is very distractive, you know, pull it into the heart and light up the heart, you know. It is just like a flashlight. If the breath stops, yeah, and then jump to the knowingness. And when you jump to the knowingness, hmm, the only thing that you know is, you went in, and the next thing is, you know is, you went out. Yeah? And the only thing that you can remember about the situation is that you were awake. Yeah? That's all. Sometimes it is, yeah, most of the time it is quite dark, yeah? <clears throat> because there is nothing there. Yeah? It's just the pure knowingness, the pure knowingness that does not know any object. Yeah? So if you see objects, it is not the pure knowingness. Yeah? <clears throat> it's still, you know, it's still samadhi. Yeah? It's still upachara samadhi, yeah? access samadhi. Yeah? But if there is nothing there, yeah? If there is just, just a blank mind, but uh, be careful, you know, a blank mind can also be, you know, just samadhi, because you see the blank mind, yeah? That in, in Apana Samadhi, if you go into deep, in, into deep samadhi, I mean the mind, yeah, and the object converges to one point, yeah, and one-pointedness. And you cannot say anything if you don't have any language for the one point. Yeah? Because we live in duality, we don't live in, in unity. Yeah? And all our words and all, all our language, all our descriptions are for duality and not for one-pointedness. So the only thing that you know, you went in, and the next thing that you know, you went out. So, I mean, he should, you know, he should look, you know, at the watch and then see how much time has passed. Yeah? I mean, it can pass hours, you know. Yeah? One moment you go in, next moment you go out, but hours can have passed. Yeah? Or even, you know, half a day can have passed, or days can have passed. That is, you know, that is Apana Samadhi. Oh, I mean, it is, it is, uh, <clears throat> it's, it's quite correct, you know, but, I mean, if he, if he has any signs, you know, that, that is not Deep Samadhi, yeah? <clears throat> if the, if, if the light comes up. There's no light in, in Apana Samadhi. There's nothing. Because whatever you perceive means you're still in duality, yeah? You're not, you're not yet one-pointed. One-pointed is one point, yeah? There is no, there is no, no, not knowing anything, yeah? <clears throat> no object, yeah? There's just this pure knowingness that doesn't latch onto an object, or there are no objects there. That's all what I can say, yeah? Otherwise, he has to come here. <clears throat> Next question. My father wishes to be reborn in the heavenly realm to practice the Dhamma there until at least Sotapanna because he deemed human life is too bothersome, while a deva life is easier to practice. What does Tanajan think about it? Well, when he is a deva, yeah, I mean, it is, it, it is possible for human beings to become devas. When we are happy, we don't want to practice. So, a deva normally has a very happy life. They, they have no intention to practice, yeah. And, and he should reflect upon, his father should reflect upon, I mean, if he's happy, he, he doesn't want to practice. And that happens to a lot of people in, 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 the, in the worldly life, yeah? I mean, the moment they are happy, they forget about the practice. When it gets difficult, their life gets difficult, then they start practicing again. 
And it's the same thing, you know, it's the same thing, you know, for devas, yeah? I mean, if you're born in a heavenly realm, you know, where the food is pleasant, you know, all, everything, you know, what you see is pleasant, there's no unpleasantness. I mean, why should you practice, yeah? And it is very difficult as a sotapanna. I mean, the Lord Buddha said about, in, said about the human life, it is perfect for finding the way out. Yeah? It is the jumping board, yeah? I mean, there you can jump out, or oh, when, when you look at the... When, when you look at the description that I normally give the hamster wheel, it's there where you can open the door. Because you see dukkha and sukha at the same time. Yeah? If, you, if the sukha, uh, if the happiness, you know, surpasses the dukkha, you know, I mean, you will not be able to see it. If the dukkha surpasses, you will not be able to practice. If the dukkha surpasses the, the, the happiness, you will not be able to, to practice. Yeah? So for us, you know, who see see it both in accord, you we see the dukkha the, uh, and the sukha, uh, then we can practice. Yeah? Then it is a perfect opportunity for us to practice. Because we have to see these both. Uh, we have to see both dukkha and sukha uh, <clears throat> before we actually you know, can understand. Yeah? I mean, we want to get rid of dukkha. Yeah? I mean, if you, if you have no dukkha, you don't want to get rid of dukkha. Yeah? And so the, the, the fourth noble truth is pretty meaningless for you, yeah? The path that leads to the end of Dukkha, yeah? If you don't have Dukkha, you, yeah? you don't go the path that leads to the end of Dukkha because you don't know what Dukkha is, yeah? That's all what I can say. <clears throat> of course, there are always exceptions to the rules, yeah? But it, it is difficult, yeah? <clears throat> okay, next question. Some personal follow-up question: Is it even possible to practice a suba with a deva, deva body, which is beautiful and probably has no organs? I I doubt it. I mean, what what did the uh, what, what did the Lord Buddha uh, Lord Buddha taught the devas? He didn't taught them a, a super practice. Yeah, I mean, he taught them. Uh, I mean, uh, the element dhatu practice. Yeah, <clears throat> I don't know too much about that. So. But it is possible, you know, it is possible, yeah, for people, I mean, especially devas who have much more sati than we have, or much more awareness than we have, I mean, to, to do the, the dhatu, the, the element practice, because even their body is made out of four elements, four water element, fire element, earth element, and, and air element, yeah. <clears throat> so they can, yeah, take it apart, you know, I mean, uh, <clears throat> and see, you know, it, it is, it's nothing, everything. I mean, even our thoughts are made of these four elements. Yeah. Memories, consciousness is made out of these elements. So if somebody has this, this amount of sati, but if he didn't practice here in this life before, yeah, then, then it is very difficult. Yeah. But it's not impossible. Yeah. Nothing is impossible. But I think he just, just, just said, oh, there's too much dukkha here in this, in this worldly life. Let's go to the deva realm and practice there. And then, then he doesn't, he, he won't practice that. Okay, next question. According to Buddhism, how does one stay filial or respectful to one's parents once they're older? How, how one is respectful? Eh? I mean, first of all, one is grateful to them that they, they brought them, brought us up, yeah? And, he's, and we are personally forgiving for whatever they did Whatever we didn't like, whatever we thought was wrong, yeah? I mean, they are not Arahants. Our parents are not Arahants. They have good in them and they have bad in them, yeah? So, so we have to recognize that, yeah? And respecting is then respect them as beings, yeah? <clears throat> and and if, especially if they are old, you know, we are, we are helping them, yeah? Helping them going shopping out, you know, and or, or driving them out, you know, take them take them on a nice tour, you know, whatever they want, you know, or or, or cook some food for them and clean the house and so on and so on. There's so many things that we can do for our parents, yeah. <clears throat> respecting respecting them as a being, yeah. I mean, being grateful for for what they've did to us and knowing that we can't even give it back to them. Even if, if even if we work, you know, work for the rest of our love, life, yeah. <clears throat> the only way that we can give it back to them is, you know, by doing a lot of merit in our practice, Buddhist practice, you know, and sharing the merit with them. Yeah? <clears throat> okay. Next question. 
Yeah. So I'll leave me, me, me. Do you have a question? No, you looked at me. Ah, okay. Next question. Is it possible to influence other people with metta and thus change their actions? Like, for example, world, world leaders or presidents. I want to tell them in war times I sometimes send my metta and I don't know if it's because of me, but they cease fire. They cease fire. That is imagination. <laughs> Even the Lord Buddha couldn't. Even the Lord Buddha couldn't. You know, I mean, when, when I think it was his clan and another clan fighting over water, I mean, yeah, I mean, he asked them, yeah, he went to them and asked them, please stop that fighting, yeah. I mean, and he had the most amount of matter, yeah. <clears throat> so it is wishful thinking. Yeah? But, of course, yeah, I mean, if you have pure matter in your heart, People will feel it, yeah? They will be attracted to it, yeah? And if you have a lot of hate in your heart, you know, people will, will, will not, don't want to be close to you. Yeah? All of us, you know, maybe we can remember a time, yeah? When, when, you go, when you go to a restaurant or when you go, went to a bar, you know, and there were a few, few tables, you know, there were only two tables, you know, free where you could sit down, yeah? On one table there was a person who was completely happy you know and and, <clears throat> and at peace with himself and the other at the other table there was people sitting and fighting yeah which table would you choose huh? not the, the, certainly not the table where the people are fighting but you went to the table you know where this person you know uh, you know was at peace or was at ease yeah? and that's the same thing yes of course if you have matter you know people are going to be attracted towards us. Yeah? They feel it. Yeah, that they don't see. They don't see it, and they don't. They are not aware of it, but they feel it. Yeah. <clears throat> so next. Yeah. I have a question regarding Buddha meditation. It seems that focusing on the breath, being mindful of its effect in the body, feelings, consciousness, and dhamma. Also focusing on repeating Buddha is a lot of multitasking. When we repeat Buddha, are we meant to recollect the qualities of the Buddha or of the no, human beings? Just, or is it simply kind of a skillful verbal formation in practice that we later drop? It is with Anapanasati, we are only aware of, of the breath. We are going in, going out, you know, is it breath? Yeah, and we are aware of the quality of the breath, you know, is it deep, is it shallow, is it is it fast, is it slow, is it rough, is it detailed? Yeah. We are only concerned about one object. There is no multitasking in that. Yeah? We think we might think in the beginning, you know, to take, you know, to 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 recollect these 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 qualities of the breath is is multitasking. No, it is, you know, going getting. Yeah, you can in the beginning you can even put, you know, put some labels on it and say, when you have no sati at all. This is the in breath, this is the out breath, the in breath is longer, the out breath is shorter. So you can put these labels on in order for us to get to the knowingness of the heart who knows that the breath is short. Yeah? We just repeat what the heart knows. It's not that we, yeah? This is something that we have to understand. The knowingness, you know, the knowing, oh, who, who knows that the breath is rough or the breath is detailed? It's a heart that knows that the breath, yeah? So we, we, we help, you know, but in the beginning, if we, if we don't have a clue, you know, what knowingness is, yeah? We go with the labels, yeah? And that will lead us yeah, sooner or later to the knowingness, and then we drop the labels, then we know it, yeah? And it's the same with the Buddha. We don't have to go to all these five khandas now. Yeah? We just stay with the Buddha. We know that the Buddha is fast. We know that the Buddha is is slow, we know that the Buddha is detailed, we know that the Buddha is, yeah, whatever the quality of the Buddha, that's what we have to know, yeah. Is it detailed? Is it go, yeah? I mean, when it, when the Buddha actually drops into the heart, it is like, you know, being in a cathedral where somebody is chanting Buddha, and then you just listen to the Buddha, yeah. But you only have one object, yeah? In the Anapanasati, you have the object of the breath. With the Buddha meditation or Dhamma meditation or Sangha meditation, you have the object of, uh, of the Buddha, Dhamma or Sangha. And you repeat it, yeah? In the beginning, you might repeat it fast, yeah? But then the, when the concentration starts to kick in, then you repeat it slow. Okay.
scene. For somebody who has completely uprooted and destroyed greed and hate, does Samadhi come really easily since most of the hindrances are based on these roots of power? Well, if somebody has it complete, yeah, it, well, it depends on, yeah? I mean, really it depends on, yeah? And when I think about uh, when I think about what Lunga Mahabhar talked about, you know, when he did, you know, when he was at the last stage, you know, battling a vicha, he had to go back to the Buddha, yeah. And it wasn't it wasn't that easy, yeah. I mean, we can. Yeah? Our investigation is thinking about something, you know. I mean, investigating is always asking the questions, you know, and and looking looking for the answers of the heart that gives us, yeah. So I mean, our mind is quite active to bring that mind, yeah back to calm. It's as difficult as, you know, some other people. But it will kick in, if you've done it before, it will kick in much, much faster than other people who have never started practicing. Yeah? So it can, be, it can be difficult, but it, it is not as difficult as a, as a beginner. But there's hardly any person, you know, who, de- who has destroyed greed and hatred. Yeah? I mean, it's, it's just a view and you know, most of the time, you know, just in imagination, people have destroyed greed and hate because they don't see the greed and hate anymore. And that's why they think they have destroyed greed and hate. Yeah? And who's, who tells us that we destroy greed and hate? Greed. <laughs> <Yeah>? <laughs> we want to be something. Yeah? No. That's a very obvious yeah? when, when we think of ourselves. I mean, I met so many Sodapana Sakadagamis who thought, you know, I mean, who thought they were Sodapana Sakadagamis, Anagamis, even Arahants, yeah? When you looked at them, yeah, I mean, they thought that they were, yeah? And that's where the problem is, they think that they are. <clears throat> it's not that they are, yeah? I mean, a Sodapana doesn't have to tell other people, ah, look at me, I'm a Sodapana, yeah? <clears throat> or look at me, I'm an Arahant, yeah? They have no intention anymore. Naran doesn't have any intention anymore. Okay? Yeah. Next. Mm, there aren't any questions about practice left. There's only some various other questions. What? There are no pra- questions about practice anymore, just some other questions. Huh? Um, I have read in other religions and also in Buddhist books that devas write down in golden sheets are good actions. Is it true? I want to know your opinion. Thank you. Devas write down in golden are good actions on golden sheets. The only thing that I know about devas is they are attracted to people who to who have good actions. Yeah? <clears throat> I, if they write it down in golden sheets, I have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> Why should they do that? Yeah. <clears throat> anyway, so sorry, can't answer that. The only thing that I know, huh? I mean, a person who has a lot of matter, a person who has a good heart, huh? a person you know who keeps the five precepts, where that's where the devas like to go, yeah, because they smell nice. They said, yeah, that's what I, that's what I know. Uh, they say they smell nice, you know, and it's just like with people. You know? We like to go to people that smell nice, you know, or they act nice. Yeah? Just like with, with the bar or restaurant that I talked about, we want to go to people who are peaceful, yeah? who not, you know, who, who, who are not full of hate and so on. Anyway, next question. Uh, these two questions are kind of related, so I'll combine them. Dear Tanajan, thank you for taking our questions. I'm wondering what advice you have to those whom intend to on ordaining in the modest, monastic form and with a holy life. If the other question is very similar, it's just about temporary ordination. What should one do? Which temple should one choose? And so on. <sighs> I mean, he has to go to temples, you know, and then see for the see what you know what what his heart says about these temples. Yeah? I mean, I've been to a few temples, you know, and then. Uh, I stayed stayed around for a while until I knew that that is not the place where I want to stay. Yeah. Temporary ordination is I, I don't yeah, I, I don't value it. Yeah. Temporary ordination I don't value. It, yeah. <clears throat> I mean most of the time the temporary ordination you know is, is three months or four months, and yeah, now that's not useful. Stay four months as a lay people and practice as hard as you can. Yeah. I mean, ordination, well, what did I say last time? You know, people want to become monks, it's just taking another profession. Yeah? 
that is completely uh, unuseful. Yeah? It's not useful, you know, to become a monk, to have a new profession. Yeah? I didn't want to ordain, other people didn't want to ordain, yeah? <clears throat> but they ordained because of, yeah, because of another reason. Yeah? Because this gives them the opportunity to work all day long, you know, on the goal, you know, to find a way out of Dukkha. Yeah? That's why we ordain. Yeah? We don't ordain to become monks, you know, temporary monks, you know, or, or long-term monks, you know, or lifetime monks. Yeah? We, we ordain, you know, because it gives us the opportunity to, to work as, as closely as possible yeah, on the path that leads to the end of the course. That's why we want to ordain. We don't want to become monks, yeah? I, mean, I know it is in the West, you know, I'm, oh, look at me, I'm a monk, yeah? Well, what is that, yeah? I don't want to say it, yeah, but you know, we are so full of greed and so full of hate, you know. The Kilesas don't ordain when we become monks, yeah? or Mejis, huh? The Kilesas are still there, yeah? They even get stronger, yeah? <laughs> when we ordain, they become really strong. I want to get out of this prison, yeah? <clears throat> yeah. That is, that is useful, that is actually useful, but only if you are willing to fight with the Kilesas, yeah? If you want to find a way out how you can circumvent this rule or circumvent that rule, you know, I mean, then your life as a monk or a mechi is useless, yeah? So, understand, if you want to practice, if you want to dedicate your, your life to practice, then it is right to ordain, yeah? Be the mechi or, or just stay in, a, yeah? stay in a monastery, you know, and as a layperson, you know, and have your eight precepts, yeah? But, you know, be intent of practicing 24 hours a day. Yeah? <clears throat> when you sleep three hours, I mean, it is still 21 hours a day. Yeah? That is, yeah? ordaining is not important. Ordaining the kilesas would be important, but they don't like to be ordained. Yeah? It's only our body, it's our, only our self that likes to be ordained. And say, so, ah, see, yeah? I'm better than you. No. You're as bad as me. Yeah. Nobody is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, the end or? Mm-hmm. And this one has been answered before, but I can ask it again. I'm having trouble with Anapana practice. There is tension on my forehead whenever I practice. I'm trying not to force it to be natural, but it's not working. If I strain myself to observe the whole length of the breath, Beginning to the end, then I can, but I get tired soon. Asking for your advice. <clears throat> the advice is not to be interested in what is happening within the body when you do anapanasati. Just be interested, you know, in the whole breath. And be, it is, it is an interesting sign that he gets tired if he follows the whole breath, yeah? because that's what the the, the kilesas don't like to to have uninterrupted sati, uh, or uninterrupted awareness. Eh? Because when you have uninterrupted awareness of a whole breath, they have no place to go into. They, do, they don't have a place to go in between, yeah? And that's why they don't like it, and that's why they say, oh, it's so tiring. Yeah? No, it's not tiring. It's just the Kilesas telling us it's tiring. But anything that happens in the realm, you know, be it, yeah, it can be a sign you know, that you force it too much, that you force your attention too much on the breath. Hmm? I, I always advise people here, yeah, we have to learn how to observe. Yeah? And how do we learn it, you know, if you don't know how to observe? We learn it by observing, observing the animals here in the monastery. Huh? We cannot control them. But we can observe them and know what they are doing. Can you not? Yeah? And that is how we should observe the breath. And then there will be no headache, there will be nothing else. And there will just be this, this uh, soft observing power. When do we need force? When the mind goes out, you know, when the mind goes out in thoughts, in memories, or in judgments, in whatever views, ideas, yeah, then we need force to pull it back and put it back on the breath. Once it is back on the breath, we observe. Yeah? When the mind goes out, then we need the force to pull it back. Yeah? 
This is so difficult because we want to control the breath. We have ideas how the breath should be or we have ideas how the Buddha should be and that is wrong. Yeah? If you have an idea, you know, how the horse should walk, it won't walk in the same way. Yeah? Hmm? Or how the ants, you know, behave. They don't behave what we think they should. Yeah? That's the way. And that is difficult, I admit it, it is difficult just to observe, yeah? Observing, 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 and yeah? knowing what is going on with the object that you observe. Oh, that's okay, that's okay. Okay, finished? Yeah? If there are no more questions, yeah, I mean, it's already an hour. If there are no more questions, then, yeah? Ten past six, yeah? Somebody's coming. Yeah? No more questions then, yeah? I mean, we are joined the meeting, yeah? Yeah? Major Emily, no questions, huh? You don't practice hard enough. <laughs> yeah? yeah? Put your effort, yeah? Perfect opportunity. It's a, it's a nice place as well, yeah? <clears throat> <clears throat> Oh, David, you, you thought already, I mean, the next Zoom session is on, on Saturday, on the 11th.